Welcome to a snarky snippet, ESPY Awards edition. I want to address Prince Harry's speech at the ESPY Awards last night with a less snark and more brutal assessment, so not for the faint-hearted. Avoiding the red carpet and possible booze, the couple scurried to their seats. Meghan looking like she was off to a vow renewal ceremony later on, and Harry looking thin-tied and thin-lipped about everything. Serena Williams tried to ease the tension by making a gentle but quite pointed joke about the Sussexes being accused of taking up too much oxygen. Only problem is they haven't been accused of that, which made her cute quip rather gaslighty. They have been accused of turning the Invictus Games into a humiliating farce. They have been accused of glorifying themselves with endless awards that no one understands the purpose of. They have been accused of being disloyal, dishonest and disrespectful. And they have been accused of ignoring Pat Tillman's mother's wishes, which apparently Harry chose to double down on in his acceptance speech. The media, meanwhile, had been waxing lyrical about Prince Harry's tribute to Pat Tillman's mother. I begged to differ. It wasn't a tribute. Harry merely took her objections and then reframed them for her. The very definition of mansplaining, a passive-aggressive way of communication where a man explains to a woman what she really meant to say. I thought we'd moved on from 1980s corporate speak, but evidently not. He offered his understanding for Mary Tillman's clearly over-emotional reaction, which he put down to the unbreakable bond between mother and son. Q implied clunky Diana reference. Harry always hides from the consequences of his actions by hiding behind his mother's loss. He did it in Spare, he did it in the Netflix series, and every interview since. However, even he can tell the cynical use of grief is becoming rather jaded, so he reinforced his armour by insisting that Invictus athletes Kirsty Ennis, Elizabeth Marks, and true military hero Israel Del Toro Jr. stand guard, protecting the dastardly doofus from the booze. And quite frankly, they all deserve better. He claimed that by accepting the award, he was raising the profile of the Victor's Games and hence saving lives. What a load of self-indulgent codswallop. He didn't raise the profile in the Victor's Games last night. It was a desperate attempt to claw back relevancy and prestige for himself. I'm not accepting this award as Prince Harry Pat Tillman Award recipient. Yes, you were, Harry, with a looming HRH in the background that you were honour bound not to use. The whole sorry spectacle illustrated in glaring detail how the Invictus Games is the only thing this couple have left to milk for their own cynical ends, and they're going to milk it, until the Invictus Games choose another high-profile, universally popular patron to represent them, and then this whole humiliating debacle will end, and we'll see the game soar in stature and support. The humiliating marches in shorts will end. The late arrivals due to milkshake runs will end. The reduction of the games to the Meghan Markle catwalk event will end, and Harry's endless navel-gazing speeches about his own struggles will be a thing of the past. It's time to move on from ex-royals using a worthy cause as a personal PR machine, a vehicle to receive undeserved standing ovations from foundations that are willing to risk their reputations for a glimpse of bargain basement for royalty. Prince Harry doesn't deserve our applause. Mary Tillman is right. He dishonoured the commander-in-chief, his family and his country. All the awards in the world won't distract us from that fact. He can try to align himself with true heroes, but it won't rub off. He can no longer bask in the reflected glow of an institutional monarchy, and every time he's given a platform to do just that, he demeans himself and the institution he sprung from. The spare needs to retire from public life and go and find a real purpose because the word salad self-justification just ain't working anymore. It's embarrassing for you, Harry, and it's excruciating for us. Bye.